Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly and in this video I'm going to show you that how you can programmatically change the tabs in your Cifio application. I will also show you how for certain views you can hide the tab. This is a very common question that people ask. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, all of this code that you have seen over here, this is from one of the previous videos. And I'm going to link those videos, or one video, in the YouTube description. So please make sure that you watch that. Because if you don't watch it, then you will not understand what exactly is going on over here. All right, so that's a prerequisite for watching this video. Instead of retyping the whole thing and explaining the whole thing, there's a video in the YouTube description. You can simply watch that, and that will show you that this particular code that you see on the screen is for programmatic navigation. This means that I can go ahead, go to the birds, go to the plants, and I can do this navigation, let's say plant detail. I can go to the birds, I can say go to detail. So each of these tabs are maintaining its own history. And we have already covered that. Check out the link in the YouTube uh, description. So what we really want to do is we want to programmatically change the tabs. You can see the tabs over here at the bottom. But how do I click a button and go from backyards to some other tab? How is that even possible? So let's first find our backyards navigation stack. So here is our backyard, or not the backyard, sorry. Here, here it is, backyard navigation stack. So this is responsible for creating the view that you see on the Xcode preview. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add a button to it. Okay, just uh, extend over here. And I will simply say, go to birds, whatever. So we will eventually have a button on the top, which is saying, go to birds. I can also say over here, go to birds tab view or tab. But when I click on it, obviously nothing really happens. And this is what we want to do, is when you press this button, go to tab or go to birds tab, then we are over here. So how can we accomplish that? All right. Now there are many different ways of doing that. One of the ways that you can do that, which is nice, is by using the environment values. And the reason that I'm saying environment values is that no matter how deep you are in, inside your view, you will be able to access those things, all right? So if you're simply passing it to the child control, I mean, you can pass like two, two down, two nested down, or three nested down, but then it becomes kind of annoying. So it's always a good idea to put these things which you want to access everywhere into environment values or environment objects. So we're just going to use environment values in this case. We don't really need a reference type for this case. So let's go ahead and start creating this. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and create an environment value. I'm just going to use the same exact file, but you should probably separate it out into multiple files. I'm just using it like this so that I can easily distribute it to you. And let's call it current tab. I guess you can say current tab key, you know and environment key. Okay. Now, the next thing that we want to do is, if you're creating an environment key, um, you need to define the default values. So let's go ahead and create a default value. And the default value, in this case, uh, we'll use app screen, and we will assign backyards to it. So the default tab in this case is backyards. Okay, this will be our initial approach of when we are creating this. And we will go and change it later on, but this is our first draft at least. Next, we can go ahead and create an extension on the environment values. Okay, I will simply say current tab. So that is the one that will be exposed, like the current, uh, the environment values will be current tab. And it's going to give us the app selection screen, which is basically the tab in other words. And now we can go ahead and implement the getter and the setter. So self, which in this case environment values, 
go ahead and find the current tab key dot self. So that is going to be returned. And we can use the same exact approach for setting. So set self and then current tab key dot self. And we will simply go ahead and assign a new value to it. Now, at this point, you can also create view extension, but I'm just going to leave it over here just to keep it nice and simple. All right. So what is the other thing we want to do over here? All right. So now we want to inject the environment values into our app tab view. So right now you can see in the content view, what we're doing is we are creating a state and then the state is passed down to the app tab view. If you look at the implementation of app tab view, this is where the tab stuff is. All right. So we need to replace this binding part of it and just read it from the environment itself. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So over here in the content view, we don't really need this. So I'm just going to go ahead and comment this out, uh, which means that we don't really need this also. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that and remove it from over here also. Now, obviously, we do need to pass something over here, like a current tab or selection or something, uh, which we are not passing. So how about this? We create a state variable right inside the app tab view. We'll call it selected tab. And it will be of type app screen. And we will start with the backyards. OK, now we can go ahead and pass this selected tab over here. So we'll say selected tab. And everything is fine. The problem is that, that this is a private local state, which is only available inside the app tab view. So if I am inside over here in the backyard navigation stack, and I click on this go to birds tab button, I can't really access the selected tab. So if I say over here, selected tab is not available. Hmm. Well, if it's not available, how can I programmatically change the tab? That's the question, right? Well, that's the main reason that we created these environment values. So let's go ahead and inject these environment values somewhere. So we can actually inject it right here in the tab, tab view. So I can say environment value or environment key path. And the current key path is current tab. And the value can be the selected tab. So we can inject that over here, all right? Okay, so we injected it over here. That's great. Now let's go ahead and go to our backyard navigation stack. And now we should be able to just read it from uh, the environment values, right? So let's go ahead and read this. So I'm going to go ahead and say environment current tab. That's what we called it. Private var and then selected tab. OK, we'll be able to grab this from the environment and probably we'll be able to change it. So if I say selected tab equals to uh, I want to go to birds. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it to birds. Well, there's a problem over here. Hmm. Cannot assign to property selected tab. It is read only. Well, when you are getting the value from the environment, well, we can't really set it. It's only read only. Well, that kind of piece the whole purpose, right? I mean, because that is what we were trying to do to assign some value to the selected tab. Once this value is assigned, uh, then I guess it's going to take us to the birds tab. But we can't even assign this value over here. So that's a big problem. So one of the ways that you can solve this problem is in the environment values, all of this stuff, app screen and all that, instead of that, we can use the binding. So the default value, instead of just saying app screen, uh, we can say it will be binding of app screen. And binding is something that you can assign. So the backyards will be no longer backyards because we do have to provide a binding. So it will be constant of backyards. 
And the same change we have to do in the environment values over here. We have to update this so that it can accommodate the binding. So I'm just going to go ahead and change this to app screen, but with the binding. Hmm. Well, now we have another problem over here. It's saying that, well, select a tab. You are simply passing in the selected tab over here. So probably you have to pass in the binding. Well, that's not a big deal because we can just put a dollar sign over here and pass in the binding. Let's go ahead and build it. OK, now let's see what's going on. Well, it's still giving us the same exact problem, right? So how can we fix it? But this time, you have to remember that the selected tab is no longer app screen, but selected tab is actually a binding. So each binding has its wrapped value also which is the underlying value. And we can go ahead and assign that value to whatever we want. In this case, I can go ahead and assign it to birds because I want it to go to the birds. Now let's go ahead and see that how this works out. First, we'll check that if the birds and everything, these routes are working fine, these are fine. And now let's go ahead and click on go to birds tab. And now you can see that we are on the birds tab. So great, looks like this is working out to be correct. Other thing that we want to cover is when we go, let's go back to detail. Okay, there we go. When we go to the detail of the bird, I don't want to show this particular tab view. I want to hide it just for bird's detail. So how can we accomplish that? But before we do that, let's go ahead and thank the sponsor for this video. This video is sponsored by AzamSharp.School. This is one of the largest catalog for iOS development videos. You can scroll down and you can see all the different courses. It's like 120 plus hours of content and 21 plus courses because I keep making courses. So there is a monthly subscription and annual subscription, which will give you access to all the current and the future courses. But you also have opportunity to buy individual courses. And check out these courses, Test Driven Development, Reactive Programming, Swift Data, MV Pattern, Full Stack iOS Development. There is no one who has ever created a course on Full Stack iOS Development. Full Stack developers are actually paid more than just iOS developers. Reality Gate Fundamentals, really amazing course. If you're excited about Vision OS, you should probably start with Reality Kit Fundamentals and start learning about Reality Kit. Server Driven UI, then you have Swift Navigation, Machine Learning. I mean, you can use Create ML to create amazing applications and many, many more. So check out all the different courses at azamsharp.school. Thank you so much. All right, let's go ahead and see that how we can hide our tab view or the tab toolbar when we are on the detail screen for the bird. So let's first go ahead and find that particular detail screen. So it should be over here in the birds navigation stack, the detail screen. I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this with another V stack. And so that you know, and I will say, hide the, uh, let's say, what is that called? Tab view, right? Or is it a different name we have to say? Tab bar, let's call it tab bar. And let's go ahead and get the font over here to be caption. So if I go to birds, if I go to detail, this, when we are on the detail, hide the tab bar. Now we don't really want to see the tab bar at this point. So how can we accommodate that? Well, one of the ways that you can do that is using a toolbar. So I'm gonna go ahead and say toolbar, visibility will be hidden for the tab bar. Okay, now let's go ahead and see if it works. Okay, it kind of works because now we are on the detail, hide the tab bar, tab bar is gone. And if I go back, the tab bar kind of comes back. All the other places the tab bar should be there, 
But if I go to birds and go to detail, the tab bar will be gone. All right, let's go over here, go to the tab. Looks like everything is working correctly. So in this video, you learn about how to perform a programmatic changing the currently selected tab and also hiding the tab bar on some of the views. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much.